Good morning and welcome to Midweek Connection on October 26th from San Angelo, Texas. I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we're here to do what we usually do. Uh, whether it's on Wednesday, sometimes on Thursday, whether we skip a week, it doesn't matter. God's Word is always available to us. And so today we're going to read our daily lectionary text and talk about it a little bit and hopefully gain a little insight into what God might have for us today. So without further ado, let me go ahead and open us with a word of prayer. Uh, gracious Lord, there are so many things that are going on in this world, so many things that are challenging and trying. Um, I'm grateful, Lord, that your word is always true, that your word is always available to us, and that we have a chance to come into your presence. So, Lord, I ask that you would speak to us today, and that we would hear from you, and that our lives would be transformed. And we thank you and praise you. It is in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. We're going to start this morning with Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exalt and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew prophetic reading today comes from Nahum chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. An oracle concerning Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum of Elkosh. A jealous and avenging God is the Lord. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and rages against his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger, but great in power. And the Lord will by no means clear the guilty. His way is in whirlwind and storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry, and he dries up all the rivers. Bashan and Carmel wither, and the bloom of Lebanon fades. The mountains quake before him, and the hills melt. The earth heaves before him the world and all who live in it. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can endure the heat of his anger? His wrath is poured out like fire and by him the rocks are broken in pieces. The Lord is good, a stronghold in a day of trouble. He protects those who take refuge in him, even in a rushing flood. He will make a full end of his adversaries and will pursue his enemies into darkness. Why do you plot against the Lord? He will make an end. No adversary will rise up twice. 
Like thorns, they are entangled. Like drunkards, they are drunk. They are consumed like dry straw. From you, one has gone out who plots evil against the Lord, one who counsels wickedness. Thus says the Lord, Though they are at full strength and many, they will be cut off and pass away. Though I have afflicted you, I will afflict you no more. And now I will break off his yoke from you and snap the bonds that bind you. The Lord has commanded concerning you, your name shall be perpetuated no longer. From the house of your gods, I will cut off the carved image and the cast image. I will make your grave for you are worthless. From Revelation, we'll read chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. A great portent appear, appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs, in the agony of giving birth. Then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon, with seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems on his head. His tail swept down a third of all the stars of heaven, and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child, so that he might devour her child as soon as it was born. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with the rod of iron. But her child was snatched away and taken to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, so that there she can be nourished for 1,260 days. Our gospel text today comes from Luke chapter 11, verses 37 through 52. While Jesus was speaking, a Pharisee invited him to dine with him. So he went in and took his place at the table. The Pharisee was amazed to see that Jesus did not first wash before dinner. Then the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools! Did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? So give, the, so give for alms those things that are within, and see, everything will be clean for you. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and herbs of all kinds and neglect justice and the love of God. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love to have the seat of honor in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like unmarked graves, and people walk over them without realizing it. One of the lawyers answered Jesus, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us too. And Jesus said, Woe also to you, lawyers, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not lift a finger to ease them. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your ancestors killed. So you are witnesses and approve of the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, so that this generation may be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel, to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be charged against this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were entering. And back to our psalm, Psalm 132. O Lord, remember in David's favor all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the Mighty One of Jacob. I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the Mighty One of Jacob. We heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Jar. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Rise up, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you in the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your faithful shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. 
the Lord swore to David a sure oath from which he from which he will not turn back. One of the sons of your body I will set on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and my decrees that I shall teach them, their sons also forevermore shall sit on your throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired for it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will reside, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless its provisions. I will satisfy its poor with bread. Its priests I will clothe with salvation, and its faithful will shout for joy. There I will cause a horn to sprout up for David. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed one. His enemies I will clothe with disgrace, but on him his crowns will gleam. And our final psalm today is Psalm 134. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <clears throat> so, <laughs> as we're reading through, you know, this Old Testament passage and it's, um, you know, our God is an angry God and a vengeful God and he will tear down the idols and he will destroy them and he will, I mean, it's this very anger and wrath and rage and all of those things. And even into, um, you know, the, the language in the Revelation passage and the dragon is waiting to devour the child. Um, but the child is taken up to God and the woman is goes to the wilderness where God has provided this place for her. And then you look at the Psalms and, and you hear the promises of blessings and the, you are my anointed, you are my chosen and you will be blessed. Um, and then even in the Luke passage, you look at the Pharisees and, and they, you know, they, they want to get him and the lawyers and he says, woe to you. He is bold. There is wrath, there is judgment, but it is righteous. Mm -hmm. And he does see the heart. He does see, and it, you know, we can't put on this pretty exterior and this pretty face and, and gloss it over and pretend it's not gonna fool him. It's, there is, there is anger, wrath, and judgment. There are all of those things, but there is Christ. And in that there is promise and there is hope and the anointed and the chosen and the forgiveness and there are all of those things and and he's he's sick is it saved that's not the right word he prepares and he offers all of that to us and so you know i think we've got to we got to keep the idols in check we've got to keep the self-righteousness in check all of those things have to be kept in check because both of those those attributes yes <laughs> thank you both of those exist. Right. And they can exist at the same time. You know what? How wonderful that he is powerful and mm -hmm. he does put Satan in his place right. and he does put evil in its place. And in right. order to do that, you have to have that judgment and that anger and this incredible power. You have to have that in order to be able to do that and to right. give us the hope and the promises that he does. Right. Um, and, and that's exactly where I was going to go with that. I think the uh, Nahum passage. I don't know how many of you have ever read Nahum before, uh, but you got to remember that first verse of it, an oracle concerning Nineveh. And Nineveh should remind us of the whole uh, Jonah story. If you've been reading your daily lectionary, you know that we just actually finished Jonah, where God had sent Jonah to Nineveh to uh, to pronounce the coming judgment against Nineveh, and then Nineveh actually repents. And at the end of Jonah, we see that Jonah was one of the reasons why he didn't want to go to the Ninevites and, and preach against them is because he knew that God was so gracious, that God was so merciful, that God, even against the enemies of Judah, that God would extend grace and mercy towards them. So there is an intentional contrast between the prophecies of Jonah and then the prophecies of Nahum. Nahum was writing 
these words of judgment against the Ninevites because even though um, Assyria, which is the, the whole country, Nineveh being the capital of Assyria, even though God had ordained Assyria to bring judgment against Israel for their sins, is, uh, Assyria uh, far exceeded the um, you know the, the the righteous judgment and and just invoked a lot of cruelty. Um, one of the things that I've been reading in or listening to on different podcasts is we worship a God who who knows when to say when. Mm-hmm. That at the end of uh, creation, when He pronounces it very good, God stops creating. Right. That was enough. And. Uh, in chapter 3 of Genesis, when God is pronouncing judgment against the sin of Adam and Eve, he stops. He knows when to say when. And so what we see is, is God who knows his own uh, attributes. You know, right. like there is justice and righteousness and, and judgments against evil, right. but there is also blessings and mercy and uh, forgiveness and all of these things. And God knows the proper use and the appropriate time for all of these things. So Nahum um, is pronouncing judgment against the Assyrians because the Assyrians went too far. Right. They were out of line. They were with out what of line. They were being, yes. I and, mean, they were out of line and, with and what And the God oppression was... that they had put on the Israelites had gone too far. Right. And now God is going to show, again, proper. And he's going to correct. He's going to correct proper boundaries. Um, and so, um, yeah, I think when you looking at the Luke passage where uh, here is Jesus pronouncing uh, woes against the Pharisees and the lawyers like you had mentioned. And, you know, I, 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 I keep wondering, like, when, when, when does Jesus actually say, like, nice and kind and polite things? <laughs> it's just like, here, here he you're is. Offending you're offending us. You're offending us too. And you're like, hmm. Here's the mirror. Yeah, right, right, and and I, I wonder about that, you know, because again, he's in the he's in the home of a Pharisee who had invited him to dinner, and and Jesus doesn't play the um, the submissive guest. Right. He exerts his authority by pronouncing these judgments against the unrighteousness of the Pharisees and and the lawyers, um, and and his biggest complaint against him is the the facade as right. you have talked about like they are cleaned up well <laughs> on the outside and 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 even uh cleaned up so well that you know their their adherence to the law right. was so precise and and focused and detailed and then they missed the, the internal heart change Right. And so I, I struggle with that sometimes because I know that my own righteousness um, in terms of law keeping um, probably is not nearly as good as the Pharisees right. or the lawyers. Um, I'm, I'm making mistakes all the time. I'm right. sometimes, I don't know, dare I say it, intentionally sinning. It's, you know, it's like, right? Um, but the heart change and where is that with them? Um, that last woe that he pronounces, woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves and you hindered those who were entering. Right. These are the religious leaders of the time. And they're making it hard for people to really know the character of God. Right. They are they are looking at themselves as the gatekeepers mm. to, you know, who is allowed in. If they're hindering that knowledge, I mean, if you're not, um, you know, I, I just look at that. That's kind of how I picture that sometimes. They, they took it upon themselves to say, well, you're worthy or you're righteous enough that you can be given the gospel. But if you didn't live up to their standards, then they were the gatekeepers. They, they, were the gatekeepers. they wanted to keep people out they wanted right. to keep those others out right and so well that revelation 12 even jumping back to the whole cosmic scale of the conflict that goes on between good and evil mm-hmm. um, again revelation is apocalyptic literature it's sometimes hard to um, fully appreciate all the word imagery that we get and you know a woman and 
uh, uh, pains of childbirth and a dragon waiting to devour the child and all of these different images we just kind of go like oh well clearly this means this or that well I don't know you know but right. but this whole idea that God is bringing one to rule um, it, when it says even that uh, she was pregnant crying out uh, what was it that um, a male child a male child rule. who is to rule over, over the nations. nations with a rod of iron and you're like well that sounds pretty uh, cut and dry you know here comes one that's going to set everything to right evil will be judged righteousness will be affirmed um, and the one who's coming to do that ultimately is Jesus Christ, uh, but the cosmic conflict that's going on uh, in, in, in ways that we can't always spiritually see, you know, we, we have to understand that God is ultimately in control, uh, protects uh, his people, provides for his people, um, defends his people. Um, you know, here in this case, you know, the woman who was pregnant uh, and ultimately Jesus being born. Um, and, and I wonder, you know, we look at the state of the world today and we can see just massive amounts of conflict all over the place. And mm -hmm. it's, it's easy for us, I think, to get so focused on events, you know, major events around the world, you know, this conflict mm -hmm. going on in Ukraine currently, uh, you know, even things on our southern border. Um, but are we even aware of the conflicts that are going on in our own communities, in our right. own churches, in our own families, in our own hearts? Well, friendships, relationships, I mean, just right, just mm. those everyday. Um, and are we so worried about being right mm. that are being on the right side of, you know, on that? global or national, you know, are we on the right side of that decision or whatever? We're so worried about being right that, what does our heart look like? Right. Are we so right from the external perspectives? You know, we're in the mm -hmm. middle of a political season where we've got 13 days till uh, national and local elections on right. November 8th and how, you know, if, if we can just vote right all of our problems will go away. And I think that's probably a, a lot of what Jesus prohibitions against the uh, scribes and the Pharisees. You know, if they, you know, if you just, if you just act right or appear right, then things will be right. right. And, and, and Jesus says, no, it's a lot deeper than that. It's um, a lot, a lot deeper than that. Well, and I think that takes away from um, the recognition, and we talk a lot about this, it's not what we're doing it's what Christ did mm -hmm. and so they when we read of the Pharisees and all of the law keeping and all of the um, you know they did all the right things it's about what they did mm -hmm. and that takes away from what Christ did and so it's not right. it's not ever about what we do and what we bring to the table it's not about what we offer it is about the sacrifice it is the love that he had for us and that he sent his son. Right. And so by somehow saying, well, if we do, if we dot all of our I's, cross all of our T's, do all of these right things, then we can do enough hmm. to earn that. And that's just, that's not the reality not of the reality. it. And so. Sure, just as uh, just as your, your ancestors killed the prophets and you built their tombs. And so the judgment on them is also the judgment coming on you. Uh, you know, you can be all about these little detailed things, but mm -hmm. miss the bigger picture. You know, who right. is the one who decides what is just? Who is the one who decides what is right and true? Um, and Jesus comes into their house and says, um, I do. I decide what is right. I decide what is just. I decide what is true. And you're not following. You're right. not doing the things that you have been called to do. Right. You're distracted by these minutia. Uh, and you're missing the big picture. Right. Yeah. So Jesus Jesus is enough, and then he calls us to live in that reality. Uh, he calls us to be clean on the inside, um, uh, you know, and then everything will be clean. Um, right. I think the outside follows. I mm. think, um, mm. you know, I, I'm sitting here thinking because, you know, there's never enough that you can do, but yet... 
if you have the heart change, I do think that that's what the exterior looks like. I think that the things that the Pharisees were portraying, I think that those who do have the clean inside, I think those are the things that we see when we would look at someone that is living um, and doing what God's calling them to do. But I think if we can get the inside cleaned up, I think the exterior is going to follow. Mm. I don't think the other is true all the time. I don't think we can fix it from the outside in. I don't think we can put on this perception on the outside and that our I just I don't think it works from the out in it works from the inside out and that outside will look very much like what the Pharisees were doing but Jesus did know you know it wasn't it wasn't about what was here it was about that facade it was the fake the um but I do think when we are doing what we are supposed to do Hmm. these things will follow put it in the right order right Right. (laughs) Jesus Jesus on the inside, and then the outside becomes clean. Um, wow, I think that's probably that's probably it. Um, you know, even in Nahum, though, with all of the uh, pronouncements of, of coming judgment and the inevitability of uh, of God's righteousness being revealed on earth, um, there's that hope of redemption for those who really actually are oppressed and something that we can take hope in. And, and I wonder sometimes, um, you know, we who live in a, you know, one of the richest times in all of human history and in a place of, of great freedom to do so much of anything mm-hmm. we really want to do, um, if we don't really even know what it's like to be oppressed, if we don't know what it's like to suffer, if we don't know what it's like to struggle in terms of uh, you know, apocalyptic type literature. Right. We have a difficult time understanding the hope of f- true freedom. Right. The hope of, of true redemption. And 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 I wonder if we if we can think. Um, you know, if we if we recognize that God did not just come us uh, come to us for for physical freedom, but for spiritual freedom. If we recognize the depth of our uh, depravity, for lack of a better word, right. uh, we would be a lot more grateful for the forgiveness that we've actually received. Um, and I think that's where, I think that's where the Pharisees really struggled. No, we are good. We are good. We are good. We don't need you to forgive us because we've done it right. Where if we right. recognize, apart from apart from Jesus, really how bad off we got it mm-hmm. uh, as a, as individuals and as communities, then we will be a lot more appreciative of what Jesus has done and a lot more. Uh, uh, willing and um, and encouraged to share that right. um, love and that compassion and that mercy with others, less judgmental and a right. lot more um, a lot more welcoming. Right. Yeah. Okay. In, into God's righteousness. Right. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hard words today. Hard words today, but good words. I pray that we'd all be transformed and changed by that. You want to close us in a prayer? I would be happy to. Great. <clears throat> Gracious Father, we thank you for your words to us today. And um, as always, I pray that our hearts are open to hear those words, our ears, that we can hear those, and that we can internalize them. And um, and as Joel said, that we be transformed, that um, it starts from the inside out. And as we are filled with your love and your compassion and your mercy, that um, we do have that outward change. And we do extend those same things to those around us. And I pray that we can um, feel hope in you and that we can um, accept that love and recognize even in the midst of struggles and difficult times that um, we do have hope in your love and your mercy and your grace and know that um, you are all-powerful, and um, that you love us. And in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us today. Look forward to seeing you in worship, either in person or online. And if you do have any questions or prayer requests, please do call the church, and we'd be happy to listen to you and pray with you. Blessings to you. Take care. Bye-bye.